Hey guys, it's Bear with the Gimby Camper. This is my version of a portable flag hanger and lantern for your campsite. I saw one when we went on a camping trip not long ago. Thought it looked like a great idea. There's many different ways you can do this. The most expensive part was the lantern on top. But just hang around. We're going to show you what we came up with. This is something you can make as complex and expensive as you want or as cheap and light on the budget as you want. And basically your only limitation is your imagination. First thing I want to go over is the supplies that I needed. I got four to five foot feet of two inch PVC, about a 50 inch piece of half inch PVC, two half inch PVC caps, two half inch male and female threaded ends. I'll show you what that's for in a minute. A two inch PVC coupler, a three inch closet flange, and a three to two inch PVC adapter, as well as some spray paint and a light of your choice. Then we're going to start putting this thing together by putting the vertical posts together. For that you want to put a 2 inch PVC coupler on the top of it and the 2 inch to 3 inch adapter on the bottom. Just go ahead and glue those in there. Then you want to take a drill bit, preferably not a spade drill bit like I have here. I made this for my dad with his tools and they're kind of limited these days. And so you just want to drill a hole through both sides of the 2 inch PVC and as straight as you can possibly get it that's just big enough for a piece of half inch pipe to fit through it. We'll get into more of why we're doing that in just a minute too. But basically it's going to be the middle support for your flag suspension. So then we want to cut a pinch of the half inch PVC just big enough to go through that hole and stick out enough on both sides to be glued. You can just go ahead and glue the male or female, but I did the male couplers to both sides of that PVC and just try to get some extra glue around that two inch pipe as well. That way it helps hold it in place. Try to make that as straight horizontal as you possibly can. Most garden flags are about 18 inches wide so I would get two pieces of the half inch pipe about 20 inches wide and go ahead and put the female adapter on one end and then you can go ahead and turn around and put a cap on the other end. Do not glue the cap on. Then try to find a piece of wood for a base to screw this closet flange to. I just put some one inch lag bolts in it. About a 12 inch base would be preferable. This is a little bit smaller than that. And I would go with, you know, a two by 12 if you had one available, just about a 12, 13 inch piece. And remember, you don't want to glue the two inch PVC into this closet flange because that's going to be how this breaks down. Then we're just going to go ahead and screw our flag holders onto the sides and go over everything with the, some fine grit sandpaper. Then we're going to take everything outside and we're just going to put a light coat of paint over it. I would suggest using Krylon Fusion or something that's made for plastic, but I couldn't find anything at the store I was at, so I ended up using some Rust-Oleum. It worked okay, but it seems to scratch pretty easily, so again, I would go with the Krylon Fusion. Go ahead and get your two to three good coats of paint on there. And be sure you're getting all angles and all around the base and underneath the arms that are sticking out. Maybe even roll them over and get the other side of them. Then we just need to add a post light to the top. I started out with just a real cheap solar garden stake light I was going to glue down. I didn't like that. I wanted something higher end. You can use something, just a post lamp that's electric. Or you, in this case, this is a solar one. It's a high end one. It wasn't with the solar lights. It was with the outdoor lights. This was $80. The whole rest of the project only cost $30, and the anti-furl rings for the flag was a third of that. So then the last thing to do is to take the caps off of the flag holders and just slide the anti-furl rings on, and that'll allow you to hold your flag. So there's other ways to do that. That's the way that I chose. And then we just added some stakes in the bottom and the base. And then to show you how this comes apart, I'm going to do a demonstration here. This is double speed. But, you know, my wife timed this at a minute, and so the hardest part's taking the light off the top, which I would advise if you use a fancy light like this to take it off during transport. But then you just take the flags off, unscrew the flag holders from the vertical post, and then just take it out of the ground at base. Everything's nice and tidy and should fit in most storage compartments, depending on how long you have the vertical post. 
All in all, I'm glad we went with the expensive light because you can see it puts out quite a bit of light and it was even still lit when I got up the next morning after the first day. The biggest problem I found is most garden flags want to have the metal piece go all the way through the top. This is made more for things with grommet rings. You might possibly have to poke a hole in the top two corners of your garden flags to be able to use them. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.